Hi everybody, welcome to my garden. Today I would like to show you three kind of weird, kind of crazy things that I have planted in the garden uh, right now that are growing great. They're at a wonderful stage. I'd like to share them. They are not very common. Um, and no, you can't really find the produce of those plants in the grocery store, so this will be a lot of fun. Um, some of you may know what they are. I bet a lot of you won't, so let's go check these out. Before I show you those, though, let me give you a little bit of backstory. Um, December, January, February, um, husband and I get very bored. We start um, getting a little green crazy. We want to talk about gardening stuff, so when we're browsing through our seed catalogs, um, we, we like to challenge ourselves and find things that we've never grown before. Um, in a lot of cases, it's things that we've never even eaten, um, which can make sometimes some of these experiments entertaining to say the least, especially if we don't like it. I mean, then what? Goodness. Uh, so we always try to incorporate a few things. I think this year we went a little wild and crazy. We actually had a lot of fun. We found um, some new sources for some seeds that we have never seen anywhere. And uh, I mean, I'm growing rhubarb from seed this year. It's, it's a great um, experiment. Um, we'll see how it works. So far I've got about 12 new babies growing. They're itty bitty. And uh, we've got the bed prep for where they're going. But that is not what I want to show you. Let's show you wild and crazy plant number one. Okay, wild and crazy plant number one that I've got growing in my garden is this. I know it's so exciting looking, isn't it? This is the cucamelon, or the um, Mexican gherkin, or, oh, mouse melon, that's what it was. It's got all these fun, cute, crazy names. Um, it looks like a watermelon, but really, really, really tiny. It is so adorable. It's like, um, it's like what Ken and Barbie would have at their picnic table. It's super adorable. Uh, very fabulous, um, kind of a slow growing vine. It took it a little while to get going, but once it did, it is up above me right now. It's nice and tall, very thin, very delicate, um, almost like a filigree style of um, vining plant. And it's got itty bitty, tiny little um, uh, baby cucamelons that are just a beautiful green and tiny itty bitty little flowers. Seriously, this is like a Barbie plant. It's so adorable. And the actual cucamelon, I guess you pick it when it's about an inch. I've got one that's growing. I'm going to show that to you. Maybe even pick it tonight because I haven't looked at it for a few days. It's probably getting close. And uh, apparently it tastes like a sour cucumber. So if you like sour things or if you really love pickles, um, my boys do. So I'm guessing that they're really going to enjoy this plant's uh, produce. I've also heard that you can pickle the cucamelons. And so pickling the sour cucumbers, it should be an interesting experiment for the summer. So let me show you those real quick. Come check those out. All right, here we go. Here's some of those babies. Aren't those adorable? They are not very big at all. Okay, and you can see how how tiny this vine is, and it's just it's just everywhere. It's spreading out quite nicely. All right, and there he is, the one cucumelon I've got growing. He is tiny, not very big at all. So I'm not real sure when to pick them. Again, I heard about an inch long, which that means that we're probably about primed to pick the one that we have, but I'm gonna have the boys taste test these bad boys and um, let them be in charge of when we should pick them and get them harvested. So it'll be fun for sure. I'm expecting a lot of pucker faces. So on to plant number two. Okay, crazy and wild plant number two. This is the ground cherry. The ground cherry is a, um, it's related to the tomato and the tomatillo family, and it grows up a little bit and then it sprawls out, like, kind of like an umbrella. It's got a really cool um, architecture actually to the plant. And um, what it does, it, it grows these berries and it grows them in these absolutely adorable little husks. You can see one back here. That's why it's related to the tomatillo that does the same thing. And it grows berries and supposedly they taste like, um, Hmm. Tropical pineapple, tomatoey, strawberry, vanilla things. I like most of all of that, so I'm like, sure, let's try it out. And they'll grow in these husks and then they drop to the ground when they're ripe, like this. 
Okay, so here's one. This is actually the first one we found. Jonathan just found it when it was rooting through and the underneath. And um, they um, are in these cute little paper wrappers now, which is like a great little biodegradable wrapper. And then you're supposed to take it inside, let it sit for a few more days, and then eventually it becomes ripe. But for the sake of video, I'm gonna open it now. And so here, look how cute that is. It's this cute little like yellow, sweet, awesome berry. Hey Morgan, yeah. you wanna try? Come here, lean in, lean no, in, lean I'm not in. wearing makeup. No, I don't care, come here. Lean in, Ugh. come here, <laughs> there she is. Okay, and what does it taste like? Be honest, but not too honest. Ew, ew. No! <laughs> no, wait, it tastes like pineapple. Oh. It hit me. There you go. And a tomato. So pineapple and a tomato. Would you I eat it? I can't say I like it. <laughs> We're letting it ripen. It we have to let it ripen for a couple of days. That was so. Tomato. Vanilla. This is weird. Is it truly tomato and pineapple and, and vanilla? Yeah. Oh, how funny. It's weird. Weird. So, <laughs> what are we gonna do with this weird fruit? Who knows? But we have eight of these. We have eight of these plants all throughout the garden. A um, right? Make it into a pina colada. I don't know. Yeah. Um, pies, crisp. Um, smoothies maybe um jams jellies who knows but we better like them because again there's eight of them so there's the ground cherry yay um on to plant number three okay plant number three wild and crazy this one we don't eat i know what's the point of planting it in the garden if it doesn't if you don't eat it um that thing up there we planted birdhouse gourds. Um, I'm super excited about cultivating the bird population in our garden. So uh, we decided that we would plant something that we can create birdhouses with over the winter when we're bored, you know, there's nothing to do outside. Right. So this, uh, this is two, yeah, see, I have a daughter and it exists. Yay! <laughs> the, um, Maybe she uses the word it to describe things. <laughs> I love my daughter. Cryptic? Cryptid. Cryptid. Okay. Um, we have two of the gird, gur, bur, We have two of the birdhouse gourd vines growing. They're doing pretty darn well. They were slow going at first, just like the cucamelon, but end of June they're going gangbusters now. They're up to the trellis up at the top. They're starting to travel down. I think about 20 feet or so of vine. Um, it's gonna get big for sure but I'm hoping that we're gonna get a whole bunch of gourds and then be able to have some arts and crafts projects over winter for them so the coolest thing about this plant number one um, if you can see yep right here are these big ginormous um, lily pad style leaves they're super cool they get way bigger than this they're soft they're like velvety soft and um, it smells really weird though like 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 or something. It's like burnt leaves maybe it's really odd but you got to walk right by it or like rub the leaves okay which for the most part you're not gonna do it's subtle but it's definitely there that's very interesting I jogged a memory <clears throat> coffee pot without the coffee after you've like you've brewed coffee uh-huh I kind of like that residue smell that's in the coffee okay, pot. Okay, so if you like coffee and but coffee it's, pot, but it's like you said, you'll enjoy something it. Rather, yeah, a little bit. It's, just a it's little, got that bit. little bit. Of that. The birdhouse gourd, big vine, smells really interesting. Should make some interesting things, but you can't eat them. Or maybe you can, I just don't know, but I bought it for the birdhouse gourds that we will have. Um, I will definitely include these beasts in the other uh, wild and crazy plants that I have in the garden. So just remember right now, he's, he's right there. Okay, that's where he's at. They're gonna be all over the place, it's gonna be super cool. So, see you next time.